the songs. I will rejoice in the glad in the air. On behalf of these men that share this platform with me from the offices of the offices of this church, I want to give them that trust in this. From the hearts of our mothers. This church family and even from our esteemed ushers, our door keepers. I see another different ushers. Amen. 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 It's good to have folk like that guard in the door. Experience with God 
as that experience aligns itself with the Word of God. Okay? I said that to say this in, in, in preface to uh, making this statement that uh, uh, it, it's, it's good for a church uh, to fellowship together outside of these hallowed walls. Because what it does is, what it does is, it, it, it tends toward the development of genuine relationship. Not, not something that's put on because you you a deacon in the church. Or, or you you on this, you serve on this ministry committee or that. But 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 as we are together outside of the confines of, of the sanctuary, and, and we are able, uh, like when we went, I'm, I'm talking about when we went on that on that trip. Well, I was just talking to the folk, to, to our members, and they were just talking with me, and we were laughing and joking, laughing. <laughs> But, but, but here, here's what it does. It develops genuine <laughs> relationship. Amen. And, and just like in, see, in genuine relationships developing, what, what happens is you're going to find, and, and certainly those of you that have been here in this world any length of time, and, and, and uh, so many of you are my elders certainly in life, but the thing that I am finding as I am paying attention is, see, see, as relationships develop and they are genuine, you're going to become closer to some than to others. Amen. Amen. It is not out of not out of indifference to the others or, or spite of the others or looking down on the others, but now as 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 relationships develop and they are genuine, you will find that you're going to be closer. To some than others. Case in point, the, the, the optimum example is our Lord Himself. He loved all twelve. Yes, yes, See? But now, He didn't ask twelve to go to Mount Transfiguration with Him. All right. All right. He didn't ask twelve to join Him in prayer. Right. At the point of His most Terrible inner struggle. He asked Peter, James, and John. Not because he did again. Not because he did not love the others. But something had occurred in their developing a relationship. Don't feel? So then, so then, I, I uh, I'm facility. Uh, manager for the Youth and Family Center in St. Louis, Missouri. And every now and then I get a couple of uh, youth and families, uh, young men that, are, that come down there to uh, play ball and that kind of thing, to help them stay out of trouble. I hire them to work with me on some projects. Amen. All right. Amen. Youth and Family does. Mm -hmm. And and as I was, as I was talking to a couple of, of the young brothers, young men, I'm talking to somebody that's 20 uh, plus years old, <laughs> two of them. And I took them on a trip with me to Union, Missouri. We were going to pick up some, some uh, uh, supply for, for youth and family. But, but as we were going out, I passed six flags. And a boy, he a man, 20 some years old said, as, we, as I passed six flags, he, they said, oh, that's six flags? <laughs> what I'm trying to say to you is, is that all of their lives, they have been locked in St. Louis. All right. For whatever reason. He had never been to Six Flags, and we passed up, uh, we passed up uh, uh, a red lobster 
restaurant. And, and, and the Holy Spirit was my witness because you wasn't there. Say it to me. I've never been in a restaurant like that. I said, come on, are you just trying to get a meal out of me? <laughs> and so I made it my business to take those men to Red Lobster. And now, and I watch this, so, just so you get the whole of it. As we sat down to the meal, they did not know how to order off of the menu. So I knew that they were telling me the truth. I said that to say this. There are some centralians that, that are for, for X amount of their lives are, are trapped within, and I don't, don't want to call it being trapped. What I'm saying is, is that their, their uh, ex life experience beyond a certain geography around here is nothing. All right. <sighs> Amen. And so the church can provide an opportunity for, for somebody to go to South Carolina and swim in the North Atlantic. Uh, and though, and, and listen, and, and listen, and yet I'm talking about you paying for it. Christ in the 21st, 22nd, 
black and the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire, but, but the Lord was not in the fire. After the fire, a still small voice. And it was so when Elijah heard it that he wrapped his face in his mantle, went out and stood in the entrance of the king. And behold, there came a voice to him and said, What are you doing here, Elijah? And he said, I've been very jealous for the Lord God of hosts because the children of Israel have forsaken. Now you will notice that this is the second time. That have forsaken your covenants, thrown down your altars, slain by your uh, prophets with the sword. And I, even I am left. And they seek my life. The Lord said to him, Return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus. And when you come, anoint Hazael to, to be king over Syria. And Jehu. I'm not going to read the whole verse. Go to verse 17. And it shall come to pass that him that escapes the sword Hazael, of, of Hazael shall Jehu slay. And him that escapes the sword of Jehu shall Elisha slay. Yet I have, and this is what I want you to stick a pen in here. Yet, this is God talking. Yet I have left me 7,000 in Israel. All the knees which have not bowed to Baal. And every mouth which has not kissed him. So he departed and found Elisha the son of Shaphat who was plowing with twelve yokes of oxen before him, and he with the twelve. And Elijah passed by him and cast his mantle upon him. I need to read this next to you. And he left the oxen and ran after Elijah and said, Let me, I pray you, kiss my father and my brother, then I'll follow you. And he said, Go back again, for what have I to do with you? In other words, go on back there and stay back there. And he returned back from him, and took a yoke of oxen and slew them, boiled their flesh, and gave the people, and they did eat. Then he arose and went after Elijah and ministered to him. Okay. I, I know I read a lot. I needed to read it all. From, from, where, from where I was before with regard to remember the two young men I was talking about and, and, and how the church uh, should be a place of resource, uh, a place of, of enrichment for the lives of men, uh, certainly a place where their souls can find the salvation that Christ affords. In this text, Elijah has just come off of Mount Carmel. He has just stood before 500 plus prophets of Baal. Okay. Okay. <coughs> stood before them and God had instructed him as to what to do because there was going to be a, a somewhat of a showdown okay. on top of Mount Carmel and and God came and really showed the folk, as Elijah said, if God is God, follow him. But if Baal is God, follow him. And so many of you, you know the story that God just showed out on that hill. God did some things that some folk would have said were impossible. God burned dirt. God is a bad man. So here, after word gets back to the king and his wife, the king of Israel at that point is a man by the name of Ahab. His wife, the legendary Jezebel. <coughs> yeah, yeah, she, Jezebel, legendary. Well, well, well here, here's the thing. Jezebel was really the king. And her husband was really the wife. And she ran things in Israel the way that she wanted. She was the 
one that brought in ultimately all of the worship of the different kinds of gods over against the God of Israel, Jehovah, right, Yahweh. Yes, well, after Elijah has the showdown, now you would think that you're coming out, out of a fight. You would think that Elijah would be pumped up. I know God is a bad man. My God is, is God Almighty. My God. My God. You, you would think that he would just be walking tall. But Jezebel heard what he did on Carmel. And she said he did what? Take a message to Elijah. And tell Elijah by the same time tomorrow. I'm going to have his head. Send a messenger to the prophet. Just got to beating down the enemies of God. God told the prophet was up there. God, yeah, yeah. You say she told me what? And it's like she took all of the wind yeah. out of his sails, if you will, and Elijah ran from mighty Jezebel. Mm -hmm. And as he is running, it appears the text suggests that as he is running, he thinks about what he has done in the face, in the front of God. Uh, in, the, in the audience of God, in the presence of God, it's like as he is running, it's like he comes to himself and he says, after all that he has done for me, I, I, I'm running. Like, I'm, 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 I'm cowardly running. And, and he says, he says, I am no better than my forefathers. He said, kill me. God kill me, I'm, I'm no better than they. And the Bible says that God answers his prayer in a peculiar manner. The Bible says that God speaks to him through the messenger, through angels, and Elijah is down there sleeping. I don't know how I was sleeping after making a prayer like that, Lord, kill me. <laughs> but, but Elijah is laying down there sleeping. The Bible says that the angel touched him. And now you'll notice how, how, our, how our God does things. God is, I mean, the Bible is just awesome. It says that he shakes Elijah, and Elijah wakes up, and God has made an oven right there in the desert. <laughs> he's got some, he's got some big goods. Yeah. Waiting for the pot from an oven that was made by God. That's, that's what you call easy bake. Yeah. And he has a nice cool cup of water. Wow. 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 Just as God to kill him, God cooks him a meal. And then doesn't chastise him so much yet. But he eats the meal. And the Bible says he lays back down. He goes to sleep again. And, and look what and look at what happened. He wakes him up again and he's got another meal. Now stick a pen in this. He says, now the meal that I'm going to give you this time, it won't be like the first one that I gave you. When you eat this time, you're going to have the strength to go 40 days and 40 nights. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. 
God will provide you what you need. Yeah. And, and now, at first, he'll show you uh -huh. that he will provide. All right, now. Yeah. Uh -huh. I'm sure I can feed you, man. Yeah. Yeah. I can bake bread in the desert. Yeah. And then the next meal that he gives him, he says, this time when you eat, yeah. you'll be able to run all the way to Mount Sinai. Yeah. Sure, 
God loves me. Elijah, Elijah is, is now eating another meal that is straight for the journey to Holy. Do you think God will strengthen you so that you make it? To my Yes, it God, but see now, if you if you eat this meal and you wake up, wake up and eat some Jesus. If you if you if you just so 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 it is for us as the as the angel. The, the angel was the one that came and shook Elijah right. and said, wake up right. and eat. Right. Well, God has some messengers here. Yes. Right. And, and what you all can carry yes. outside of these walls, uh, yes. you need to shake somebody yes. and say, wake up. Eat some of this bread. Jesus is the bread of heaven. He was, watch this. He was, he was put in an oven. Yeah. They put the bread in a bottle of it. Mm. 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 Y'all feel me? Because see, the bread wasn't done yet. It had to go in the oven first. <laughs> like, y'all think I'm making this up, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> they put the bread in the oven. And the third day, it was all ready. Yes. And the bread came back out of the head yes. and said to a dying world, eat, yes. drink, yes. and live. Yes. If you eat this bread, and then you drink of this wine, yes. you drink of this drink, yes. you shall
Bible says that God passed by it. And a wind came and cracked open rocks. And see, see, for so many in the church, if God ain't cracking open no rocks, it can't be God. And if God ain't shaking me tempers, and if he's not shivering me tempers, then it's not God. So you run along, you, 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 you get to the, to, right, right. you get to all these places where, yeah, where, where there's a whole lot of shaking going on over there. And a whole lot, get on over there and shake. Right. 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 Yeah. That's it. Man, there's that's God, that's God. Right, right. The Bible says that God would hinder. Be careful. Be careful what you put God in. Over against what He is. Yeah. Then it says that He yeah. said that there was some fire that showed up. And you know, you know the Lord always oh, doing something with the fire. You know, he, he's a Lord, he's a fire. Shut up in my home. Well, when I, uh, Jeremiah didn't say that it was fire. He said it's like fire. But, but, but you know, it ain't got that fire. And, and the Bible says that God was not in the fire. But then there was, watch this, there was a still, a small voice that came and spoke to Elijah. Said Elijah, watch this, Elijah didn't have a reaction to the earthquake didn't have a reaction to the rocks breaking wind. Didn't have a reaction to that marvelous Church thinking. 
thinking like that. Mm -hmm. Well, it's afraid of a church that thinks it's invincible. So, so when I tell folks, you can't kill me, I, I don't care, I don't care how what you do, I can't go until he calls. Amen. And Christ came out of the love, I mean came out of the grave. <laughs> He rose with all power, all power in his hand. Hey, my dear mothers, my, my elders, those of you that are suffering, dealing with some aspect of, of the dread adversities of this life, those of you who are struggling with your, your wives, your husbands, your children, your grandchildren, your neighbors. God is asking, what are you doing there? Hey, you need to show, uh, the Bible says that Jesus learned obedience from the things that he suffered. I said, I said wait a minute. Jesus learned but you see, God never had to obey nobody. <laughs> it was new for God to have to obey. It was new for God to truly, genuinely suffer. So Jesus, God in is a high example. Whatever you are suffering with, suffering through, you need to know that you've been fed with a meal that's going to take you to the mountain. Thank you. Thank you. He says, with this meal, you can run 40 days. Yes, sir. 49. Mm -hmm. That is symbolic of you can run for him. Yes. 40 days and 40 nights. You do know the Bible suggests that a day is a thousand years. Yes, Lord. Ah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's a fight.